Would you like to know the best time to get AWS, Azure, or Google certified? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the best time to get certified. And whether it's your AWS certified certifications, your Azure certifications, your Google certifications, or honestly, anybody else's certification, there's a best time to get certified. There's a time that's going to be strategic for your career to get certified. And we're going to talk about that in this video. So when it comes to getting hired for your tech career, there's two components of getting hired. Well, there's a few more, but there's two primary components. One is being able to do the job and having the skills to do the job. And the other side is building your brand and getting interviews and getting certifications. They are not the same thing. So if you do this in the correct order, you're going to have a great tech career. You'll get your first tech job, whatever it is. You'll have no challenges. You'll get promoted. If you do this in the wrong order, unfortunately, you may struggle and you may have to go back and reverse your order after the fact. And I can tell you, I see it all the time. So many people think certifications are where they're going to get started. They're going to start. They're going to go get a certification and they're going to go get a job. Unfortunately, that approach usually fails. And let's talk about why the certifications are not the starting point. So when it comes to getting hired, we have to have two things. One is the ability to do the job and the other is the credentials, typically speaking, to do the job. Now we can get hired with the ability to do the job with zero credentials, but no matter how many credentials we have, if we can't do the job, we still can't be hired. So please understand that. So let's talk about skills that get someone hired versus skills that get someone certified. Let's say we're dealing with, say, an AWS solutions architect or an Azure solutions architect or a Google solutions architect, what have you. you know, during the certification, here's what they're going to learn. They're going to learn about the name of something and how to set something up, typically via like a web page setup wizard, something like that, or via a command line. So the name of something and how to do it. Now, when I actually hire a solutions architect, and in many cases, I want this from our senior engineers as well, but when I hire a solutions architect, they're not gonna be setting up anything in their life. But what they do need to know is have a certain set of skills. Now, I need my solutions architects to have what you call professional judgment, which is not how to set something up. It's knowing when I should use a service, when I should not use a service, what are all the alternatives and what are the alternative strengths and weaknesses and which might be best for my business given all these constraints and trade-offs. So another thing that I might expect out of a solutions architect is a trade-off analysis. Someone that can compare, say, latency versus cost or security versus inflexibility or availability versus complexity or availability versus cost. Or, you know, do I use this next generation firewall or can I get away with this AWS WAF? Or well, what's the difference in the way these two firewalls work and which one would be better for my security? So that's the kind of thing that you would do as a solutions architect, but that's not going to be taught in a certification. Now, in any role, say a solutions architect or even a serious engineering job, I need the person to understand the underlying technology, how the underlying technology fits together, the impact of a change in one part of the system to the other part of the the system. That's job skills, but unfortunately, none of this is going to be in any certification, including the AWS Solutions Architect Professional, the Azure Solutions Architect Expert, and the Google Professional Cloud Architect. They're much more about the name of something and how to configure it. Now, when I hire someone, they need to understand failure modes and say limitations. When something's going to break, how is it going to break? Where is it going to break? How is that going to impact the system? And how do we design around the breaks? Now, at the same time, in the architect, I might need ex excellent communication skills, excellent leadership skills, excellent sales skills, excellent presentation skills, business acumen, that kind of thing. And the certification is not going to teach that, but that doesn't mean the certification is not worthwhile. The certification is still very worthwhile. So I like to look at an AWS certification or an Azure certification the same way that I developed my education and my career. I spent seven years in school and then I got board certified to do my job, but it was the seven years in school where I learned how to be an internal medicine nurse practitioner and do that job. And the board certifications afterwards, that was just showing the world I was ready. 
Now, when I started my tech career, and I've helped uh, countless people in every country you can possibly imagine now, working at AWS, Azure, Cisco, Google, IBM, Accenture, Deloitte, KPMG, Capgemini, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Barclays Bank, and I could go on. Most of the cases, people came to me and they had a certification. But the certification lacks the context, the certification lacks the skills. And in their case, they were certified, and then we got them trained. But in your case, I want you to think about when to do your certifications. I want you to get them because the certifications build your brand. They make you look good. Certifications help you get an interview. And that's a wonderful thing. But the certifications won't get you hired, but they will get to the interview and it is your skills that gets you hired. So I want you to train your skills first and after you've got the skills to do the job, that's when you do your certifications. Then you polish up your resume. You go out there, build your brand. You train for your interview and you get hired. But skills first. And that's the secret to knowing when to get do your certifications and when to get value out of your certifications and how to show the world you're ready to be hired. If you'd like to become a cloud architect or a solutions architect, an AI architect, security architect, enterprise architect, or any other kind of architect, please join me on a free architecture webinar, which you can sign up for in the description of this video. There'll be a link to it. And on this webinar, we will cover the skills of the architect. We will talk about what we do as an architect. We'll talk about how you get hired when you lack experience and everything you need to know. We will also give you opportunities for at least an hour to ask live questions on Zoom to me about your career, and we'll do anything we can to actually help you in these free cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect type webinars. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video soon. Take care.